Hello, hello, hello. Welcome, everyone. This is the voice of your boy, Ken Akure. In today's session, I'd like us to look at trading plan. Now, in our last class, we looked at coming up with a trading edge. A trading edge means a trading strategy, something that tells you if an opportunity is present in the market, an opportunity that you trust, that you've used over time, an opportunity that you are sticking with. And the reason why you need to have an edge, an edge is something that you strictly follow is because there's a lot of noise in the market. There's a lot of distractions. There's a lot of false signals, false moves that the market does as a way of luring you to trade as a way of tempting you to trade, you know? So your trading edge now serves as, uh, as an anchor. Yes, an anchor that keeps you sane in an environment that can make you do, an, do insane things. So your, your, your trading edge, if you are in the high sea, for example, and your ship just keeps sailing, you can get missing because of the waves and everything. But then your anchor is what holds you steady. So your trading edge is like the anchor. So, but without your trading plan, your trading edge would underperform. So now that you have a trading edge, you now need to bring it into a trading plan. Now, your trading plan is bigger than your trading edge. Your trading edge is part of your trading plan. Now in your trading plan, you're looking at what do I trade? Now I have a trading edge, a trading strategy that I want to be using. Does it mean I should go and trade it on everything in cryptocurrency market or in the financial market? There are millions, maybe thousands of things that you can trade. Now, if you look here, you can trade stocks, futures, Forex, CFDs, cryptos, index. You can trade metals, you can trade commodities, you can trade bonds. So there's a whole lot of things that you can trade. But your trading plan helps you become specific. What do I trade? When you answer what do I trade, let's say we're in crypto. Okay, I'm going to trade crypto. Within crypto, there are thousands of cryptos. Which ones do I want to trade? Which ones should I focus on? So you say, okay, I'm going to trade only, I'm going to look at only Bitcoin, Ethereum, uh, BNB, FTT, ADA. Then any other one, I'll delete them. I'll delete them. Why? I need to be focused. I can't be looking at too many other things. And even in these ones, I'm only trading ETH and BNB and uh, FTT and ADA. I'm only looking at Bitcoin because it's the leader. I'm not trading Bitcoin. I only trade these altcoins. So you've defined what you want to trade now. For a start, I always tell people just do one. Just do only one. It's money you want to make. And in trading futures, it's not the number of things you trade that matters. It's how much you make anytime you enter a trade. Trading is stressful. So it's not something that you should, you should just be trading everything. You'll be stressed out and mentally you'll be affected. You don't want to do that. So you want to just pick a few things that gives you, that presents you trading opportunities in which you can use your trading strategy or your edge. Because you've tested your edge on that market and you see that it works over time. You've used back testing, you've tested, you see that it works over time. So you've decided that, okay, I'm gonna be trading those four things. For the next, you can say for the next two months, I only look at this, or for the next one month, I only look at this. You stick to that. So you've defined what to trade. The next one is when will I trade? Do I want to be trading in the middle of night when people are sleeping? Do I want to be trading um, early in the morning? When do I want to trade? How would I trade? So when do you want to trade helps you choose your time frame. Of course, your trading edge, you would have defined the time frame on which you are using this trading edge. So, but now this is when to trade, you're defining the, the time now that you'll be active. So you can say, I'll check for trades early in the morning. I'll wake up by five, check for trades. I'll check again later by seven or eight. I'll check again later by uh, 10. 
I'll check again at 12. Now you are defining the times when you trade. Why? Because when you're not trading, you take your mind off the market. Why? The market never ends. It's ongoing. So if you keep exposing yourself all the time, always in the market, always in the market, you'll be psychologically affected. You'll be over trading. So you define when to trade. And when you are outside those hours, you don't care what the market is doing. That way you can sleep in peace. You can have another life. Trading is not all about your life. You can't just come to the charts, sit down 24 hours because you are, you are trading, no. So after defining when to trade, the next thing, based on your capital, you now define how much position size you'll be opening at your risk. So what I tell people to do is if you have an account balance of like, let's say $1,000, you can tell yourself that I'll be risking let's say 3% on every trade, or if you are very aggressive, you can say 5% per trade. So it means that if you have a winning trade, you, you, are, uh, you are risking $50. If, you, if that trade goes wrong, you lose, sorry. Yeah, if that trade goes wrong, you lose $50. And how do you do that? Your position size. So if you are trading, uh, let's say you're trading something like ADA, for example, can you see this market that I got out of? It's going in our favor. If you're trading something like ADA, for example, if you enter, and let's say you want to put your stop loss at 5% away. So let's try this trade. So let's try this trade for perspective. So let's assume I have $1,000 and I'm willing to only risk $1,000 is my collateral. I told you guys, forget about all this leverage. Focus on the collateral that you have. So let's say I have $1,000 and I want to risk 5% of my trade and I want to trade a coin like ADA. So let's say I put my take profit, I choose my take profit. Let's use 108, sorry, yeah, we're selling. So take profit to be 1.0, uh, let's say 1.08. 11% take profit, my stop loss. So let's say a stop loss of 5%. Stop loss of 5% automatically tells you where your stop loss should be. Stop loss will be here, you know. Some people use a fixed percentage, but usually I tell you, set your stop loss based on your market structure, where your resistance is. Let it be above your resistance. So 1.27 is above here, so that's fine. So then I want to risk a, let's say I want to risk $50 on this trade. I want to risk $50. So I'll open a position size of $1,000. So it tells me that if I'm wrong on this trade, I'm going to lose $50. This is approximately $50. That's the risk I want to take. Then I click on place trade. Now I've entered that trade. If I'm wrong, I lose $50. If I'm wrong, I lose $50. Why? I've entered with a risk of $50. Now, that is about defining your position size and your risk. You've done that. So you're trading $50, not because you want to trade 50, risk $50. It is because that is part of your trading plan based on your account balance. You are risking $50 because you know that not all your trades will be winning trades. In fact, the first three trades might even be losing trades. So you don't want to go and risk all your $1,000. What if the first trade is a losing trade? It means you won't have opportunities to trade to enter other trades. It means that it's not that you are a bad trader or you don't know technical analysis. The market didn't just work out in that trade that you entered. But because you are not wise, you didn't give yourself room, you know, to be able to trade again if the market gives you another opportunity. So that's where position size comes in. Then the next thing, your position size also helps you set in your entry and your exit. And by entry and your exit, I'm referring to uh, your stop loss. So you're looking at your stop loss, SL, and your TP, take profit. So your take profit is where you get out if this market goes in your favor and your stop loss is where you get out. For us, I think we set 1.27, yeah, somewhere here. 
is where you get out if this market goes against you. Now you've set all that already. What do you do? You now move away. So the next thing you'll be focused on now will be trade management. So this is your trading plan. And you need to have all these written out. You need to have all these things written out on a paper or on an Excel sheet that you enter. You know, so you can see that this is a serious business. Do you understand? It's a serious business. And the less activity you do, the better. Why? Because you need to be able to be documenting all these trades. So if you take too many trades, it will be hard for you to document. So that is why trading spot is different from trading futures. That's why trading futures is a little more, requires a lot more precision, a lot more seriousness, because this is a, a higher risk thing and you can't afford to be sloppy. Now, that is all about having a trading plan. Then the next thing, when you have a trading plan, you now need to have a journal a journal where you make your entries. It can be an electronic journal on your laptop uh, or a book. I have a book where I record the trades. So how do you use the book? You start with the rules for your edge, your confirmation checklist. Now, when you come to the market, you've decided what you want to trade. Let's say we're trading Ethereum, BNB, and ADA. That is what to trade. So you cannot trade anything outside that. So when to trade, this is the trading time frame. This is the trading uh, hours that I'm going to be using. You know, so when those times come, you go to the laptop, you look for trading opportunities, then you go over your confirmation checklist for your edge. Meaning you ask yourself this question. This trade I'm looking at entering is priced at an area of resistance. Is price coming from or around my market baseline? The TDI is you overbought, oversold. You answer those questions. When you have two over three, then you go and enter the trade. And when you enter the trade, you follow your position size rules based on your account balance. So that's how you marry the two together. So whether the, if the trade is a winning trade, you write it in your journal. You know, you're going to be doing checking all these checks in your journal too. I followed this, my rules. This is uh, the checks. I checked, I had two over three. I risked $50. This is how much I made from the trade. I made $100 from this trade. It was a good trade. You tick it up, I followed my rules. You write it in your journal. It means you have one trade one. You have 19 more to go. Why? You are trading in sample sizes. You don't just want to be trading right now because you are like, I have $1,000. I'm going to take, okay, $50, $50. Yes, that's 20 trades. That's 20 times. Why? You are trying to build confidence in yourself and in the trading strategy you're using. So if the first one is a losing trade, you write it there. Number one, losing trade. You try number two. So by the time you get to number 20, you want to see what your win rate is, what your win ratio is. If you are following the rules uh, like you should, you know, and by... Trading in sample sizes, one to two, it will also stop you from over trading or entering too many trades. Why? Because it means you'll be going over your 20 uh, trade sample size in like a week or in a day, which is not good. It means you'll be over trading. Do you understand? So you set your entry and exit, then you get, you wait for the market to play out either in your favor or against you. Now, thank you guys for joining. This is all about using a trading plan, uh, trading in, uh, uh, using the right position size, journaling your trades and reviewing your trades. So if it's a losing trade, you also review it in your journal. Oh, what did I do wrong? Why, why? I didn't follow the rule like I, I should. I missed out on this. There was a minor resistance. Like if you look here now, you can say, oh, there's actually a minor, there's actually some form of resistance here too. So I shouldn't be buying, why? Because this market broke this resist, this support, retested it, and then it's coming down, simple. I shouldn't have entered. You correct yourself. So next time, what do you do? You watch out for even the smaller things. That's how you trade. That's how you up your game. You're trading just a few pairs. Thank you guys for joining. See you in the next one.